Cars.com Auto Review. Hi, I'm Kelsey Mays for Cars.com here with the redesigned 2013 Honda Accord Coupe. We cover the Accord sedan in a separate video where we talk about interior quality and some of its roominess. Here we're going to talk about driving aspects and cover some of the new technology in the Accord. Like the sedan, the Accord Coupe got a little bit smaller this year, about a half inch less in wheelbase and a couple inches less in overall length. The nose carries a similar look to the outgoing Accord Coupe and upper trim levels with the V6 get LED daytime running lights. These have more of an old school kind of jeweled look like LED daytime running lights did a few years ago. Some luxury cars now have gone to continuous lines for their LEDs. I like that better. Not a big fan of these. You get around back and you notice that the taillights are a little bit shorter than before. They don't quite envelop the trunk like the old Accord Coupe's taillights did. The bumper is sort of framed now by uh, these reflectors and on our test car this chrome strip down here. I don't know, a little bit too much going on for me down there. See what you think. Now inside, there's an 8-inch screen up here. It includes things like a backup camera, USB audio interface, um, Bluetooth audio streaming and phone operation, and even an app that plays Pandora off your smartphone. Pretty good stuff. Most trims also get Honda's Lane Watch system, which mounts a camera on the passenger side rear view mirror. It shows an 80 degree view, Honda says, of basically the next two lanes next to you, which Honda says is about four times what your typical side view mirror shows. It's really helpful, especially for bicycles and city traffic, but the problem is that you can't see a lot on the screen when you're wearing polarized sunglasses. Now, upper trim levels get a touch screen down here. It also includes Honda's Honda Link system, which can stream podcasts and other radio stations off of internet radio provider, AHA. Now, if you were to plug in my phone, you'd get a different sort of AHA. Yeah. Engines include a 185 horsepower four-cylinder or a 278 horse V6. The four-cylinder pairs with a six-speed manual or a CVT automatic and it's actually pretty peppy thanks to a new direct injection system providing a little bit of extra torque. The V6 on the other hand pairs with a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic. Our test car's manual has short throws and a more attractive shifter, but it's not exactly a performance car. It revs strong and moves quickly off the line, but power doesn't really get forceful until you climb north of 3,000 RPM. Put the car into a hard corner and the wheels spin unevenly as the nose pushes wide. A limited slip differential might help, but the only Honda to get this is the Civic Si. We'd like to see the V6 manual Accord get the same thing. Honda said only about 13% of the prior generation Accord sales were of the coupe. Still, it should carry the performance banner for the nameplate, seeing as this is the only way you can get a V6 and a manual transmission. Although it's not as fun as Detroit's muscle cars or handling aces like the Scion FRS, the Accord Coupe does mix in practicality and cabin quality like none of them do. In the end, that's a combination that deserves plenty of attention. For more car-related news, go to cars.com or our blog, kickingtires.net.